Well, it finally happened. Uh, Friday night, to be precise. Friday afternoon, my safety score beta reached 100 after almost a month of being on 99. And that night, the notification came through that there was a software update waiting for me. And when I downloaded it, it was the full self-driving beta that I had been waiting for. 2022.12.3.20, I'd like to say, but uh, I'll put it underneath here. So, I played around on Sunday just to get the feel for it. And today, this morning, I had a wonderful opportunity to test it out. I have a mailbox down in the city of Blaine in Washington State, just over the border. I had a projector bulb for this little uh, Super 8 projector that I was going to pick up. And I figured, let's use the opportunity to put the car into full self-driving right from my home here, all the way across the border into a different country and see how it works. So this is my very, very first FSD drive of any substance in my own car. I want you to join me as we go down for a trip from my North Vancouver home, right the way down through the water to the little town of Blaine, where I have a mailbox, Hagen's of Blaine. Uh, we're going to go there and I'm going to set the car right now to navigate to Hagen's, as you can see there. Once I get started, I'm going to engage autopilot, full self-driving. Every time something goes wrong, I need to hit that little tiny video camera symbol so it can take a snapshot of what happened and why the car failed to perform as it should have. Another thing to just mention is it's really difficult to convey the sensation of being in the seat, feeling the extent of the acceleration or the braking or the turning. So I'm going to describe it as best I can. Hopefully be able to convey to you what it feels like to sit in the seat of a car that is engaging in full self-driving and is not taking any input from me. Now, of course, if it messes up, I do have to intervene, obviously. So we're going to get going. <laughs> I'll have to black that out. All right, I guess I can go faster. So just driving along Lynn Valley Road. It is interesting to note that you can stretch that to fill the screen and get a much better idea of the visualizations, how things uh, actually look on the screen. It gives you a good indication of what the car is actually detecting. But let's just get into full self-driving so that the car can choose its own route. It is scary stuff. One of the things I discovered yesterday as I was just testing it was that when it makes up its mind to go, it accelerates. And I had Janine in the passenger seat with me. Now, is it going to turn left? Yes! It didn't do that yesterday. You can hear the indicators on. We're turning left down on a mountain highway. I do have to be very mindful of one thing. If I do not touch the steering wheel, move the steering wheel, maneuver it, and it's giving me a warning, if it warns me for too long and it kicks me out, I have five failures and then I'm out of the program. A Tesla revokes the full self-driving beta program from you. Let's right, so see what it's doing around the corner here. Okay. <laughs> and then a set of red lights, but oh my gosh, it just braked in the middle of the road. <sighs> okay. It is very, very scary when the car is out of control. Now, I'm glancing at the road all the time and looking at the camera from time to time, but I'm holding the wheel, looking at the road, because I'm terrified that it will do something wrong and I'll be the cause of an accident. I cannot blame FSD because when I signed the agreement, it said, you are in full control of the vehicle and you accept full responsibility. There it is. So we're at the corner here of 27th and Mountain. And so far, it's done the right thing, excepting it knocked my water bottle onto the floor. We'll have to pick that up at the next light. That blue flash was a warning to keep twitching the steering wheel. 
I mean, I might have my hand in it, but if I'm not actually twisting it slightly, turning it slightly, it has nothing to do with squeezing the wheel, it's turning the wheel ever so slightly. Now, you can see from the visualizations here that um, the car is aware of everything. Those two cars ahead, there they are. Car in the driveway, there it is, parked at right angles to the road, still shows up. Take a look as we drive past here, you'll see numerous examples of parked cars in people's driveways showing up on the screen. What that says to me is that the autopilot that I had before never gave much of an indication of what it saw that was not exactly on the road ahead. This is showing me everything that it's aware of, including that pedestrian that just disappeared, and it's quite a reassuring, quite a comforting feeling to know that the car is aware of almost everything in the vicinity. Now, look, obviously it's not showing trees, houses, um, verge, but it is showing the borders of the road, showing parked vehicles and people and bikes and prams. Um, what do they call a pram in North America? Strollers. Back in South Africa, a pram. And Britain. So as we go around the corner here, the speed will drop because it sort of changes to 30 kilometers an hour. I have somebody behind me, but I'm going to slightly accelerate just so that they don't go crazy. So far, very nice. And I'm going to pull the screen back so I can see the navigation. Braking for the red lights ahead in good time and it's doing it smoothly. Okay, we're going left, it needs to go left again. <laughs> it kind of grabbed for that at the last minute, but that's fine. We're now in the correct lane to exit to go into the Trans-Canada Highway number one. Indicator going. <clears throat> Car turns. Now, if this was the days of safety score beta, that hard turn would have given me a strike. Uh, let's just do that, shall we? Increase the speed because it is now an 80 kilometer, 80 kilometer limit on the freeway. We're having to merge, so let's see how it does. And here we go. Yeah, I would not have called that I would not have called that a very elegant um, feed into the highway. It left it till the very last minute and then it just kind of slid into the road and I heard that big truck behind me honk because obviously it was not going fast enough for his liking. Now I did not tap on the, the record button up there but in future I will. So here we come to Second Narrows Bridge. This is a bridge where there are some traffic lights on the feeder road but the car is not being fooled by them and it's ignoring it which is good and it's keeping me in this particular lane but here we go it's going to try and turn into the fast lane but there are cars coming what about now yes <laughs> okay that is that is very good because that is the gap that I would have taken when those two cars were passing, the two ahead of us, it would have been disastrous to turn. But there was a big enough gap between that car and the one behind me uh, for us to be able to get into the flow of the traffic. So, stressful, first time, and it's busy, but I'm loving it so far. Keep the hands on the wheel, keep the eyes on the road. One thing that it told me in the agreement that I assented to is that the camera up there is going to be much more active in making sure that I am vigilant and I have my eyes on the road and that if it does see anything it's going to give me a reminder on the screen so we'll just get the speed up a little bit here so we don't annoy the people behind us too much. We're coming up to the Cassiar Tunnel where Navigate on Autopilot disappears for a brief moment until we get out the other end so it won't be doing any lane changing once we're in there at least it never did before on autopilot, so, so we'll see what it does now.
So, looking at the navigation, it tells me that I have 27 kilometers to travel before it takes the... Whoa! That's a very loud horn from the train. We're exiting into sunshine now. And uh, we have 27 kilometers before we turn off to the Delta turn off. That turn off will take us right down to the border through the truck crossing. What does it do when it crosses an international border when we move from Canada into the US? The cellular connection will change from Rogers in Canada. Fortunately, where I'm going is just across the border and the Rogers signal is still present there. So I don't end up incurring roaming charges because it remains tracking on the Rogers cellular network. So here we go, we're on freeway now. I won't include this in the final edit because you're not gonna sit for 27 kilometers. Uh, the freeway has always been a pretty good demonstration of autopilot features. I'll record it just in case anything interesting happens. But basically, we're gonna wait for the turn off in what is now 24 kilometers as we turn off at the Delta exit. Here is the Portman Bridge, and again, it's uh, difficult to see, but it is an amazing structure, and you, marvel at the experience and the skill of the engineers that designed all of the loads and the number of cables that will be needed, the angles, the tension. Mind boggles but it's a wonderful uh, experience and this bridge is a great bridge to cross. So here we are now back in the HOV lane where um, we're only 6.3 kilometers now from the Delta exit which will take us straight down to the border through the border crossing at the truck crossing and um, into the little quiet town of Blaine. And by the way, on another note, um, I've just taken possession of the new DJI Mini 3 Pro drone. Um, I got rid of my Phantom 4 Pro and it was just too big and cumbersome and took up too much um, space and traveling. And the Mini drone is about that big with a small handheld control and um, I'm going to be doing a review of that in an upcoming episode. For those of you that love flying drones, this is an amazing piece of engineering. It tells me here I have an upcoming lane change. It's 4.3 kilometers, but it is going to have a challenge to get out of here because this solid white line keeps going for a long time and the car gets nervous after a while and um, sometimes does some pretty desperate things to get itself across. So let's see how it handles this. We have to cross three lanes to get across to the exit. And we have 3.3 kilometers to do it. It's getting nerve-wracking. It's 1.6 kilometers. Here are the dotted lines. Go! <laughs> and it does. It takes off. There we go across one lane. There we go for lane number two. <laughs> and uh, the turn off is ahead. And here we go for lane number three. What is it going to do? It's going to get between the two cars. I guess that's exactly what I would have done. And there we go. With um, 400 meters to go, Red Dragon did it. Full self driving Beta did it. So we're turning off now. This is a bit of a scary part because we have to slow right down. We have to get into the extreme right-hand exit in order to join the road down toward Delta and toward the border. So let's have a look. We're slowing down. You can see it there. Pretty smoothly. And just around this corner, we have to move extreme right to get into the lane that will take us out. Let's see how this goes. Well, we've slowed right down now to 45 kilometers. Come on. Oh. All right, it did it, but it crossed the solid line. Could have done it a little earlier. It did get into the lane. <laughs> the guy behind must think I'm a complete novice. So, no cars behind us. This should be a pretty simple merge. moment it appears it's going to stay in this lane 
And I guess it noticed all of the traffic ahead of us in the accompanying lanes, decided not to change right away because it wouldn't have gained an advantage. I do think now that it has to merge, and let's have a look at how it does it. See, that's... I'm going to tap on that, and it takes a snapshot, because any time you merge, you do it smoothly, and you do it as early as you can. You don't wait till the last minute, and then try and jump into the lane. Um, this basically waited until the merge lines were coming to an end, and then it just jerked into the correct lane. It's got to be smoother than that. But this is a good opportunity to tell you how it feels. I think the overall impression is, wow, wow. This, the whole concept of the robo-taxi and the ability to use Teslas and the full self-driving to actually do the driving for you, I've been skeptical for a long time that we'll get 100% of the way there. I'm pretty convinced that at this point with this particular version of FSD, we're well over 90% of the way. There are edge cases, and when we talk about an edge case, we're talking about extreme areas, very difficult uh, parts of the difficult stretches of the road, uh, things that even a human would have some confusion or difficulty with. Those are edge cases. I don't yet expect the car to do well on those. That's why we hit that little reporting icon up there. And um, by the way, this coming to a stop at these lights, I've never felt it that smooth. I doubt even that I would be that smooth on slowing down. Is this different from the autopilot I had before a few days ago? Yeah, it is. Very, very much smoother coming up behind this truck. I think it's stopping about a car's length away. What am I on here? I'm going to put it on a following distance of three, kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but that was very smooth. Uh, we're about 16 kilometers from the border right now. When we get there, we'll go through. I hope I don't get arrested for having cameras all over the place. Car wants to change lanes, get into the faster lane. That's good. And off it goes. Very smooth. Once again, the visualizations are amazing. And when you look at it full screen, it really does give you a sense of exactly what it is that the cameras are detecting around it. And it responds very quickly as it sees a car, picks it up, and the car moves literally the way that it looks when you're looking out of the windshield. One day, one day, we're going to see trees and shrubs and grass on the side here, but I think it's a full-time job for the computer chip just to process all of the moving vehicles around when we have autopilot 6.0 or 8.0 with massive processing power i think elon will then make it look super pretty now how smoothly does it take off that's pretty good it's not much different from what i would do excepting i might be a little closer to the vehicle ahead but that's good feels good feels safe it's also, as you would know by now if you've used autopilot, staying in the middle of the lane. Uh, when the lane widens, it still sticks to the middle. My preference is really that it would stick closer to the line, the center line or the right-hand line, so that it doesn't wander around when the road widens. Right now, there are very few uh, user-controlled variables. Uh, so, for example, if you had a variable that said smoother start, smoother stopping, hug the center line, things like that, that would be very cool. So you could begin to adapt the car to your own driving style and your, and your feeling of comfort. At the moment that's not in, but um, let's just get full self-driving working properly, 100%, and then we can look at all of the uh, refinements that Tesla could bring to bear on the control panel on the operating system. I'm very impressed with the way that it takes off. It is smooth and the way that it stops uh, when it knows that the lights are red, that is smooth as well. Now you notice that while I'm in full screen, I still have access to the next turn on the nav. 13 Ks, H, H Street, 
which is already in Blaine. So it will bring that back and now the navigation switches back to there. But it's very confident in crossing the intersections. With the old uh, autopilot, it would always give me a red hands on the wheel and shriek and uh, autopilot cannot continue. With the FSD, it can continue. It is continuing and doing a very good job of it. The lights are red ahead. The car is slowing down extremely gracefully. Oh yeah. <laughs> That is beautiful. And on the right over there, Model X. Another Model X. Um, Vancouver is a little bit like um, LA North. We have the highest population of Tesla vehicles, S and X to a degree, but mainly the Y and the 3. Um, I cannot go a block without one of the cars coming toward me being a Tesla or cars on each side being Teslas. That's just how well Tesla has taken off in the city of Vancouver. You know, when I got Red Dragon four years ago yesterday, we were the only people in North Vancouver with a Model 3. And the Model 3 had only been released a day before I picked up mine. So literally, there was no one had a Model 3. And now everyone has a Model 3. And I couldn't be more pleased. Now the lights have gone amber. And once again, super, super smooth. I think the battery on the camera just above me is out, or the card is full. We're just about to reach the border, and I'll still talk you through exactly um, how the car behaves. Even though that means you have to look at this ugly mug, so I apologize for that. Ahead, USA border. I probably have to take over control just to get the car to go into the Nexus lane because how does the car know I have a Nexus card? It doesn't. It really does feel like you're in the privileged classes if you drive through with your card. So I can now go up and I have to display the card as I approach. Good morning. Good I'm just going into um, Hagen's of Blaine. I have a light bulb that I'm going to pick up. I come from, no yeah, it's for a projector, old fashioned projector. Uh, old, uh, eight mil or what? Uh, it's eight mil, yeah, eight mil. <laughs> Which no one has nowadays. Yeah, thank you. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Close the window. We are now in Blaine, and as I said, I don't have that camera working at the moment here to show us what's ahead, but literally at this point here, the autopilot use has come to an end, although we may as well try it. Let me just uh, double tap, and it's going to turn right onto H Street. That's an imaginative street lane, right? So we're going ahead, coming to the lights at the top there, and um, it should indicate right, and you'll hear it on the microphone if it does, as we get near the lights. It indicates, it turns right, and the speed limit is 20 miles per hour. At this point here, I'm gonna bring it to a stop go out of autopilot. I will mention this, when it turns, it often twitches the wheel quite um, noticeably. It doesn't do a smooth turn yet like a human being would do. Uh, it twitches very, very quickly, but it does maintain the line. So not that it's not doing its job, it's just it's not that smooth. So what did I think? I am impressed. It's not perfect. Sometimes it accelerates and breaks a little on the hard side. Sometimes when it turns corners, it uh, twitches a little bit more than it should need to. When it merges, it's not always merging as early as it can. It tends to wait till the last minute, but it does it. When it changes lanes, it gets there in time. And I'm truly blown away by the fact that literally 
this car took me from my home to a location in a different country and did all the work. Now in upcoming episodes, what I'm going to do is take it through challenging areas. I'm going to take it through areas that have weird road configurations, where there's construction, perhaps where there is rain, uh, take it out at night. There are so many ways that we need to test. How does full self-driving cope with these conditions? But for today, a great introduction to what is for me a truly exciting opportunity to test full self-driving in its beta format and to grow with it and have you along for the ride so that you can be fully apprised of what full self-driving is capable of doing and whether or not it's worth your while to get FSD in your Tesla. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next episode and thanks for watching.